thanks to all your generous donations, we're able to get this very good plastic shredder here. The first step is to shred the plastic very fine. So let's do it. Take a look at how fine that plastic is nice and shredded. Very fine, very good shreds of plastic there. Now plastic by itself does not absorb microwaves. So we need to mix the plastic with carbon in order to allow it to absorb microwaves and break down in this machine. Carbon is one of the products of this process, one of the byproducts, so we're actually able to keep it a closed loop by using this carbon. Now let's turn on these blades and let's load this plastic in the machine. We have to open up these air valves in order to allow us to load plastic in. Now we need to pull a vacuum on this machine to suck all the oxygen out. So that way the plastic cannot burn or catch on fire. I have this yoga ball here to visualize as the air is being sucked out the machine. Now, we can turn the machine on. We're going to be paying attention to this sight glass because this sight glass is going to let us know when we make oils and when the plastic is turning into fuel. Shortly after turning it on, the sight glass gets foggy and the yoga ball starts to fill with vapor. This lets us know the plastic is being broken down back into crude oil vapor under the form of pyrolysis. And we are now cracking the plastic into fuel. About 10 minutes in, it's evident the view glass is becoming very foggy. These are the natural gas vapors from the plastic. So that lets us know that the plastic is indeed being turned into fuel. As you see, the yoga ball is starting to fill in very nice as well. So things are going well very early on and we actually also have a thermometer here. Right now it's at 42 degrees centigrade and that thermometer is on the output pipe. This pipe system here. That lets us know what temperature the vapors are as they come off. We need this output pipe to hit around 100 degrees centigrade before we're going to start seeing oils come over. The goal of this machine is going to be able to be to make so many vapors of this natural gas that we can actually run a natural gas generator off of these vapors and then run the machine. Use that generator to power the microwave system in return. And then once this machine gets up to temperature, which is the point of most energy consumption, we can actually turn off 
microwaves or certain magnetrons. We don't have to run as many for one. And for two, we can also now continuous, continuously load plastic in while it's already hot and up to temperature, which will actually allow the plastic to become a reaction that is almost endothermic because the plastic will break down quicker into carbon which will allow microwaves to absorb it better and microwaves absorb things better when they're hot and since the machine will be already hot as we load a new plastic everything will just become way more efficient and my hypothesis is that we will pretty easily be able to actually run a generator completely off this machine just 15 minutes after turning it on the first yoga ball is almost completely full of vapors the operating pressure of the machine is about a quarter of a psi we just hit 100 degrees C on the vapor column temperature. We already have a yoga ball completely full of vapors. We're 30 minutes in. So comparing this to my Mark IV machine, temperatures rise very quickly and vapors form very quickly in comparison to Mark IV, which it would take about an hour before we would have a yoga ball full or extensive temperatures. So we should start to see some oils coming over pretty soon. Vapor output pipe is 150C. Starting to get some drips and drops coming out. But take a look at the natural gas product. Look at that flame. Hook that right to a generator, baby. We're starting to get some oils dripping. That's what we like to see. See there's one streak there, but then there's some little drops dropping down every now and then, like you saw that right there. It's what we like to see. Very foggy sight glass here, completely white now, you can't even see through it. So all of my yoga balls are full, you guys already know. You know what I do with my balls when they're full, I put them where they belong, in your mouth. So I have to flare this natural gas, but... That's not an issue. That will be going to a generator one day that will run the machine. But look at the oils that we're getting now, baby. They're, they're coming along, aren't they? Sure are now. Sorry to blue ball you, but we got some updates on the construction of the machine. So I installed a few more waveguides. We're at eight waveguides now. 8 of 12, that means I'm able to mount up to 8 magnetrons at once. Unfortunately, with my power system being 120, I can't run that many. I can only run about 6 at the most right now, but the point is we have 8 mounts, only 4 left to go. That's what you see me doing here right now, putting on this 8th waveguide. So now we have 3 at the beginning, 3 in the middle, and 2 at the end. The third waveguide in the middle was not filmed at this point, but... Nonetheless, once I cut it out, weld it onto the machine, drill the holes into the flange, make it line up. Then we have to put in our dielectric microwave gasket here. And you see I use RTV silicone, put my gasket material down, crank down that torque on the whole waveguide system to make sure it's compressed. Put the magnetron on. Whole system pretty much done there. After that... You guys saw the reactor looked different. It was insulated. Well, I had to insulate the reactor to get the numbers, efficiency numbers high enough, the temperatures to rise high enough for us to be able to actually make any type of oils at all. Because I tried to run it, do test runs with no insulation, zero oil, not without a very long time of running it, just because it wouldn't get hot enough. So I used rock wool here. This is temporary. This insulation could come off pretty easily. It's just banded in place. So I eventually want to move to cow wool, something more efficient, something better, something also that doesn't look as ugly either, but for now, test runs, it's okay. So we're going to update you guys on the next video when it comes to how the test run turned out that we did here. Anybody that wants to support the project, I do have a Patreon, I do have a GoFundMe, I do also have YouTube memberships, any and all types of support help out, all contributions go to mark 4.5 you can also get merch naturejab.com slash merch it all helps out very much thank you so much for watching the video and you guys take care and i'll see you next time